What if everything we thought we knew about the origins of the British people is about to change? For years, the story was clear. After the Romans left Britain, waves of Anglo-Saxons arrived, completely transforming the island. They brought their language, their culture, and even their genes, supposedly forming the foundation of modern English identity. But recent genetic research is shaking up that old narrative, revealing that the true origins of the British people are far more complex and surprising than we imagined. What if the Anglo-Saxons didn't dominate as much as we've been taught? What if the native Britons weren't pushed to the fringes but rather blended in with these new settlers? In today's video, we'll dive into these groundbreaking discoveries that could rewrite the story of Britain's past. We'll explore how new DNA evidence is challenging the idea of an Anglo-Saxon takeover and what it means for our understanding of British history and identity. You want to stick around for this one as we uncover the real story behind Anglo-Saxon Britain. For centuries, the dominant view of early British history has been pretty straightforward. After the Romans withdrew from Britain in the early 5th century, the island was left vulnerable. Soon after, Germanic tribes, the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes, began migrating from what is now northern Germany and Denmark. According to historical accounts, they didn't just settle in Britain, they completely transformed it. The Anglo-Saxons supposedly pushed the native Britons, who were Celtic, to the outer regions, places like Wales, Scotland, and Cornwall. Over time, Anglo-Saxon culture, language, and governance became dominant forming what we now know as early England. By around the year 600, the narrative tells us that the Celtic influence had all but vanished from much of the island, and the Anglo-Saxons had become the cultural and ethnic backbone of the land. This is the story we've been told through historical texts like the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle and Archaeology. It's a neat, clear-cut explanation of how Britain was shaped in the post-Roman era. But here's the thing. This story might not be entirely true. In fact, it could be way more complicated. New genetic research is revealing that the Anglo-Saxon takeover wasn't as absolute as we've been led to believe. Let's dig into those new findings. With the incredible advancements in DNA technology, we can now examine ancient remains and extract their genetic data. And when scientists started looking closely at the DNA of ancient Britons, they were in for a shock. One of the largest studies published in Nature involved analyzing DNA from over 400 skeletons, dating both before and after the Anglo-Saxon period. The results were eye-opening. Instead of a complete genetic overhaul, the study found that the Anglo-Saxons didn't replace the native population. In fact, there was much more genetic continuity than previously thought. The Anglo-Saxon genetic signature is certainly present, but it's not as overwhelming as the traditional narrative suggests. This means that instead of wiping out or displacing the native Britons, the Anglo-Saxons mix with them. This blending of populations challenges the idea of an invasion that completely changed the genetic landscape of Britain. What the DNA shows is that the Anglo-Saxon period was one of integration, not replacement. The native Britons weren't erased. They were very much a part of the emerging population. These findings are reshaping how we understand the dynamics of early medieval Britain, showing that cultural change doesn't always mean a complete demographic overhaul. But there's more. Let's look at what this means for the legacy of the pre-Anglo-Saxon Britons. Before the Anglo-Saxons arrived, Britain was home to a mix of Celtic tribes and the remnants of the Roman occupation. These people had their own cultures, languages, and ways of life. Traditionally, We've been taught that when the Anglo-Saxons arrived, these Celtic Britons were pushed to the fringes, with little influence left on the rest of the island. But genetic studies are telling a different story. In regions like Wales, Scotland, and Cornwall, the DNA of the native Britons remained remarkably intact. Even in parts of southern England, where Anglo-Saxon influence was strongest, there's evidence that the native population wasn't wiped out. Instead, they integrated with the newcomers. This suggests that the native Britons played a much larger role in shaping early medieval Britain than we once thought. The idea of a simple us-versus-them scenario, a sweeping Anglo-Saxon conquest, doesn't hold up. What we see instead is a complex picture of migration, interaction, and blending. The genetic legacy of the native Britons is still present in today's British population, meaning that their influence persisted, 
even as new groups arrived. This new understanding is forcing us to rethink not just the Anglo-Saxon period, but the entire history of early Britain. So, how exactly did this integration happen? Let's explore the role of migration and cultural blending. The traditional story of the Anglo-Saxon invasion paints a picture of conquest and displacement. But what if that's not how things really played out? The new genetic findings suggest that migration didn't just bring conflict. It brought integration. Instead of a sudden, violent takeover, it's likely that the Anglo-Saxons and native Britons lived side by side, interacting and intermarrying over time. Migration in this period wasn't always about war and conquest. There were also peaceful interactions, trade, alliances, even intermarriage that helped populations blend together. This gradual integration makes sense when you look at the genetic data. Anglo-Saxon genes mixed with those of the native Britons creating a population that was more diverse than the traditional narrative suggests. This blending wasn't limited to genetics. Culturally, the Anglo-Saxons likely adopted aspects of native Britain traditions, and vice versa. The result was a fusion of cultures, where different groups influenced each other rather than one group completely overpowering the other. This process of migration and integration challenges the black and white idea of invaders and natives. Instead, early medieval Britain was a melting pot of cultures and people, each contributing to the emerging identity of the land. Let's take a closer look at how this played out in different regions of Britain. One of the most fascinating aspects of this new genetic research is the regional variation it uncovers. The Anglo-Saxon genetic influence wasn't spread evenly across Britain. In some areas like East Anglia and Kent, the Anglo-Saxon presence is much stronger. These were regions where the Anglo-Saxon settlers had the greatest impact, both culturally and genetically. But as you move west and north, towards Wales, Cornwall, and Scotland, the picture changes. Here, the native Britons maintained much of their genetic and cultural identity. Anglo-Saxon influence is weaker, and in some places almost non-existent. These regions became strongholds of Celtic culture, resisting the Anglo-Saxon dominance that was more prevalent in the South and East. This regional diversity challenges the idea of a unified Anglo-Saxon Britain. Instead, early medieval Britain was a patchwork of different cultures and peoples. The Anglo-Saxons may have been dominant in some areas, but in others the native Britons remained in control. This variation reflects the complexity of migration and cultural exchange in this period, reminding us that history is rarely as simple as it seems. Here's where things get really interesting. While the Anglo-Saxons didn't completely dominate the genetic landscape, their cultural influence is undeniable. Anglo-Saxon language, customs, and social structures became dominant, even in places where their genetic contribution was relatively small. How did this happen? One theory is that the Anglo-Saxon elites, the kings, warriors, and noble families, held positions of power and prestige, which allowed them to spread their culture across a much larger population. The native Britons, while retaining their genetic identity, may have adopted Anglo-Saxon customs, language, and governance over time, especially in areas under Anglo-Saxon control. This process of cultural assimilation explains why the Anglo-Saxon legacy feels so strong, even though their genetic impact was more limited. The adoption of Old English, Anglo-Saxon legal codes, and religious practices reshaped Britain in ways that went far beyond genetics. In a sense, the Anglo-Saxons succeeded in leaving their mark not by sheer numbers, but by cultural dominance. This cultural legacy is part of what makes the Anglo-Saxon period so influential, even if the genetic picture is more nuanced. But what does all this mean for our understanding of British identity today? To fully appreciate these new genetic insights, we also need to consider the role of archaeology and historical texts in shaping our understanding of Anglo-Saxon Britain. For years, archaeological finds, like burial sites, artifacts, and settlement patterns, were interpreted through the lens of an Anglo-Saxon conquest narrative. However, as we revisit these findings in light of new genetic data, we can start to see different interpretations. For instance, certain burial practices previously attributed solely to Anglo-Saxon culture may reveal a more blended approach, 
combining elements from both native and Anglo-Saxon traditions. Artifacts like pottery and tools can also showcase influences from various cultures, suggesting that trade and interaction were crucial in shaping these communities. Historical texts, while invaluable, often reflect the biases and perspectives of their authors. Much of what we know about the Anglo-Saxon period comes from works written by later generations who may have glorified or mythologized their origins. By comparing these texts with archaeological evidence and genetic findings, we can gain a more nuanced understanding of how people lived, interacted, and influenced one another. The interplay between archaeology, historical records, and genetic research offers a holistic view of Britain's past, reminding us that our understanding of history is ever-evolving. So, what does this evolving narrative mean for our modern understanding of identity? The implications of these new findings extend far beyond academic circles. They resonate deeply with contemporary issues of identity, belonging, and cultural heritage. In a world where discussions about race, ethnicity, and national identity are increasingly complex, the Anglo-Saxon narrative serves as a fascinating case study. Understanding that British identity is not monolithic, but rather a rich tapestry woven from various threads of culture and genetics encourages a more inclusive perspective. It challenges us to reconsider how we view our heritage and the histories we pass down. This is especially relevant today, as debates around immigration, cultural assimilation, and national identity continue to be at the forefront of social discussions. Moreover, the insights from genetic research can foster a sense of pride and diversity. Acknowledging the contributions of different groups to the British identity can help build a more cohesive society, one that values every thread in its historical fabric. As we learn more about our past, we can better appreciate our present and envision a more unified future. In essence, these new findings about the Anglo-Saxons and their relationship with native Britons highlight that history is not just about the past. It's about how we understand ourselves today. So, let's continue to explore these questions together, pushing the boundaries of our understanding of who we are and where we come from. So, there you have it, new genetic evidence that challenges the traditional story of the Anglo-Saxons in Britain. The truth is far more complex, with native Britons playing a much larger role in shaping early medieval England than we ever realized. What do you think? Does this change how you see British history? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more fascinating insights into history, science, and culture. In our next video, we'll explore the genetic legacy of the Celts, so don't miss it.